Cisco Firepower and Secure Endpoint Integration. So this is what Cisco Endpoint AMP or formerly Endpoint AMP and obviously you have to have licenses in both. The one caveat that I ended up having was my license expired on Firepower and I'll give a shout out to Roman for giving me heads up on that and that happened to address my issue initially. What we're gonna do is add the AMP Cloud connection here. In my case, it's US Cloud. It's gonna redirect me to uh, the secure endpoint console where I'm going to allow the groups. Now, here if you don't specify a group, by default it'll stream events from all groups. I'm gonna be selective here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit allow. The goal here is, is to empower the analyst to be able to be in firepower, investigate something that's happening and know what happened on the endpoint, whether it was quarantine, whether the malware is executed or not, all tremendously valuable when you're investigating uh, an incident. We want to make sure the state is enabled. So we'll check that. And that looks good. Well, that's it. That's all we have to do for integration. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Now, this file is actually marked as malicious uh, in, in Cisco technology. It helps us get through other security technologies that may block uh, a file like EI car. And uh, maybe this is further down. You can see it says it can't download the file. We go into the history and we have a quick check and we'd look at all events and we're gonna see that we see the file is certainly uh, been detected and, and also quarantined. So that's perfect, that's what we expect on the endpoint and I'm not blocking on firepower, so this did go through firepower. Let's go into malware events and have a look. This is gonna be network file trajectory that we're gonna pivot into and this is gonna give me the view of what took place between these assets. So I can see very quickly that there was a creation here and we also see that there was a quarantine event. That comes from endpoint AMP. I know that network device seen it. I'm not sure why I didn't block it. Maybe my policy didn't do that. In my case, that's true. Um, and maybe I want to uh, uh, enable a block uh, capability at the network so it doesn't have to come to the endpoint. But as we start to drill into this a little bit more, Let's drop this down and have a look at some more details that are available to us. So now we're looking at the table malware events. We can see it threat detected. We can see the file path at the end user side, right? And that's again, uh, valuable because I only would see from a network lens perspective, not an endpoint perspective. I can see things like what uh, the AMP cloud is, which device saw it. I can see the application name as an example as well. So that's neat. I've got some good insight, more insight than I normally would have had. And I probably would have had to jump to other um, platforms to get some more information. Don't forget with table events, you've got a, a bunch of other columns that you can add. I'm just showing that here just so people know it, it's almost um, a little bit of a, a hidden gem that, that some people don't know about. So I, I try to call it out every once in a while. Okay. So Everything's working as expected. We know that there was a threat detected. We're in Firepower Management Center. We know the path on the actual endpoint. We, um, we also know um, that the, the, the malware was quarantined. Let's have a look at indications of compromise. And so we can see malware detected here. So these are host indications of compromise summary. And here we see two events. One again says threat detected by endpoint AMP not executed. So that means the user never executed the payload. That's gonna relieve us some stress, right? Because that suggests that the malware was never executed. Again, if I jump into the host profile and wanna learn a little bit about the host itself, I can see those two events. I can mark them as resolved as I resolve them. I can also see the potential operating system if it's fully discovered or not. I know it's a Windows-based system at this point in time. I can see the current user um, is HR1. My IOCs are there and available and I can pivot into those events. I see all my application protocols. I see user history information as well. And as I scroll down, I can see things like attributes that we may have assigned to it, host protocols, other malware uh, detections, again, I can pivot from there, and vulnerabilities that we've passively identified. That's pretty cool. 
I can get all that information with a click of a button about the host. So we're coming up near the end, but before we do, let's jump into Endpoint AMP and make sure that what we saw in Firepower actually translates into what we see in Endpoint AMP. So we see a compromise here. There's that zombies.pdf. Again, we just mark that as bad. It's not a malicious file by any means. Let's jump into events. And when we jump into events, we can see this Windows 10 host. That's the host we were looking at. And there's that quarantine successful. Here's the file path. We've also got file size and the parent file name connection detail or connector details, there's the hr1 at cisco.com.